There is a major reason to why cold email potentially has not been working for you yet and it is actually not what you think. A study made by Snow.io in 2022 addressed that 85% of B2B marketers use cold email as their primary method to acquire clients. But what is the reason that most people do not succeed with cold email? That is because they do not really understand how their receivers interpret the email. If you think about how you very rapidly scroll through your emails every single day, it is obvious that if you do not stand out, you're getting left on red with little to no chance of getting a response. If you do not sell your prospect on the next line, it does not matter how short the email is, they will not read it. The average business person receives on average 121 emails every single day, so if you're not straight on point, they will not read it. So my name is August Tange and my team and I have the past three years been running a warm and cold email marketing agency for e-com and B2B businesses and the way that we get our clients to that agency are through cold email. Cold email is the only sales channel that we've been using for outbound marketing and we're sending roughly 90,000 outreaches per month now, booking five meetings with qualified business owners every single day. And we're closing high ticket clients predictably so we know where we are in three, six and 12 months from now. So now. I'll dig into the perfect cold email script that we have spent the past three years refining. But first, I want to show you how to not write a cold email. So I received this email a couple of days ago from one person whom I do not know what wants to offer me. So taking a look at the subject line, they are saying important opportunity for you, which is all right because it awakens my curiosity. They're saying something that potentially could provide some value to my life, but still it's, it, it feels kind of scammy. It feels like something that everybody writes to you. But the most important factors of subject lines is that you keep it short and you keep it very concise and you make it curiosity based it's super super important so it's all right it's a good uh, subject line it could be worse so taking a look at the uh, introduction they're saying hey august my name is john and i represent c25 vas a leading provider of talented vas for your agency i recently came across your company and was impressed by your online presence first of all he says hey my name is john and I represent 25 VAs, which is completely irrelevant. What I would do, I would mention something personal about me so it can awaken my curiosity even more. So I'm getting sold on the next line instead of saying something completely irrelevant that has nothing to do with what you can offer me. Because you always have to think about what is in their best interest and what makes them want to read more. And I don't really care that your name is John. I'm sorry, man. A leading provider of talented VAs for your agency. I recently came across your company and I was impressed by your online presence, which is generic information. It is something that I know that you didn't do. It is very, very like generic people will read this and they're like bullshit because you're saying I was impressed by your online person, which everybody can write, right? You need to find something personal about them. And then going over to the next line that is completely irrelevant as well. I wanted to reach out to you today to discuss a fantastic opportunity that we can offer your company. And it's like, it doesn't really matter what can you offer me. And still it takes four lines before you get down to the point of what exactly your offer is and what you can do for me. We have a revolutionary product that has helped numerous agencies like yours skyrocket their sales and increase customer engagement. And yeah, I would make this even more specific. And I do not still necessarily know what you are offering. It's way too unspecific. So I have no idea like what you want to do in my business in order to increase profit and increase customer engagement. Now taking a look at the next line again, pretty, pretty irrelevant. He's saying something guaranteed to give your competitive market edge. It's still unspecific. He says, I would love to schedule a call or a meeting to provide you with more details about our product and how it can transform your business. And still, it's a very, very long call to action. Again, it's very, very unspecific. So I would never write back to this because I do not know what you want. And then after that, you are providing a second call to action. I have attached a brochure for your reference and I encourage you to take a look. So you're encouraging me to take a look at something else as well. So you've just given me two call to action and two purposes in the emails and most definitely I would only have one, always only have one purpose in the emails because otherwise it is going to be too overwhelming for your prospects. I would just say something like, would you be open to potentially jump on a 20 minute Zoom call to hear more about this? Something friendly like that and be friendly and be open. People do not like to do business with someone who are rude over the emails. So saying I have attached a brochure for your reference and I encourage you to take a look. That's very, very aggressive. I understand that you're busy, but I'm confident that our solution will be a game changer for your company. And still, it's it's super aggressive. It's like you already think that you have sold me and you're basically prescribing me something without even knowing what exactly my numbers and what my business are, which in my opinion just sounds like bullshit. So what I would do instead is instead of saying I'm confident in our solution will be a game changer for your company, I would not write that at all because you have not even gotten on a call with them yet. And the whole purpose of the call is for you to get more information about the company so you can prescribe the right solution for them as a doctor. Right 
now you're basically just prescribing me something that you do not know if I need. And then again, you give me a another call to action. Can we arrange a call next week to discuss further? I'll be in your area on Wednesday, so perhaps we can grab a cup of coffee. And again, yeah, it's, it's the same thing. It's very, very aggressive and we have three call to actions. So uh, we'll just cut that down to one. So let's go into a, an email that is a little bit better. And this is the framework that we have been using. So we have the introduction plus icebreaker. Then we have the offer plus guarantee or the risk reversal. And then we have the trust to back up all the claims that we're doing with the offer. And then we have a call to action, very, very simple. And obviously a signature down in the bottom, then compliance and then an unsubscribe link so they can unsubscribe from my emails. So taking a look into the introduction plus icebreaker. Hey August, saw that you've been running Magna.io for three years now. Amazing what you and your team have achieved for your clients. First of all, I will stop up because you are just mentioning that I've been working for my company for three years now. That is specific information that not everybody knows about me. So I will stop up and read this because you have taken more effort out of your day to actually write this email. And then uh, taking a look at the offer, straight to the point, we help agencies like yours grow even faster by installing our proprietary four-step content system that shoots out 90 content pieces per month, giving you at least 50,000 views in 30 days or you don't pay a penny. Now, this is a very, very good offer and it's very, very relevant for me because I'm making YouTube. We are making long-form content, but we do not have any short-form content right now. So if anyone came with a specific offer like this and sent it out to me in a cold email, I would be very, very interested and actually jump on a call with them to hear what they have to say. So they are showing something that is relevant exactly for me. And that is why I'm interested in reading more. And they're basically selling me on the next line. Then taking a look into the trust of the case studies, they basically have to back up the claims that they have just made. So Druva Media got 108,000 views and 52 inbound leads in the first month after working with us. And again, this is something that I really want. The whole purpose of this is getting more inbound leads. And they just showed that one of my competitors actually got that. So I feel some FOMO and I want to jump on a call with them. Would you be open to jump on a 20 minute Zoom call explaining exactly how it would work for Magna.io? And then you just have this signature down at the bottom and then obviously the unsubscribe link and that's my friends is a very very good cold email because it is very very specific it is short and concise and it awakens my curiosity and you're selling me on the next line so yeah like and subscribe if you found any value in this video and i will see you in the next one